And let's start with two industries. Uh, one is journalism and the other is Hollywood, which is we're sitting in the midst of this. Uh, one of the concerns I have, I know you share it, a lot of people do, especially with elections coming up in you know, 18 months, 2024, is what is truth? Uh, and are we gonna enter a post-truth world? And can you talk about your thoughts on journalism and how AI is impacting it? So I think you've seen shifts in journalism over the years, uh, but we're all familiar with kind of some of the clickbait journalism that we see now. Um, AI can obviously do clickbait better than humans. And that's one kind of extreme. This whole fake news, deep fake kind of stuff, that's a real concern. And that's why we have authenticity mechanisms now. We embed watermarking, you know, we partner with GPT-0 and other things to identify AI. But on the other side of it, there's a real challenge coming because AI can also help with truth. It can help you do proper analysis and expand out the reasoning for things. It can identify biases within. So journalism as it stands is caught between two things. To get clicks, to get ads, they went a bit more clickbait and they focus on sensationalist headlines, even yep. if it's with unnamed sources and things. On the other hand, someone's gonna build an AI system, AI enhanced system, that for any article you read, you can find all the background material and that suddenly becomes a source of truth. So it's kind of a pincer movement. And journalists and news sources will have to figure out where are you in this? How do you compete to provide value? Yeah, are you BuzzFeed on one end, which is you know mostly all click by it all the time, or are you trying to be the New York Times and deliver well-researched journalism? But the entity that competes with the New York Times that will come, and who knows, it might be the New York Times itself, can use AI to enhance great journalism, write in any voice, do all these things, and give fully referenced facts that you can explore. The other side is that we're gonna trust this technology more and more, just like we trust Google Maps, just like you trust other things, such that it's like, why have I got a human doctor without an AI? Yeah. Why have I got a journalist who isn't using AI to check everything and their own implicit biases? And I think that part is actually quite misunderstood as to something that's coming because, again, humans plus AI outcompete humans without AI. I, I, I believe in that and I see that. And I, I think, you know, it's interesting in my life and those I know, um, AI hasn't replaced the things that I've done. It hasn't actually even saved me time per se because I'm still spending the same amount of time. Mm -hmm. It's allowed me to do a better job at what I want to do, which is the end product. Yeah, well, I mean, that's because you do a little bit of everything, so you'll always fill yeah. the gap, you know, like... It's true. I, I, feel, <laughs> I feel every moment of the time creating something for one of my companies. Well, I mean, this is an open AI report that was done where they said that between 14% and 50% of tasks will be augmented by AI, will be sure. changed by AI. Because, again, I think a large part of the focus is on these automated systems, the Terminators, yeah. you know, to the bots, whereas realistically... The way this AI will come in is to help us with individual tasks, rewriting something, generating an image, making a song, adjusting your speech to sound more confident. Yeah. You know, and, and we'll get to the dystopian conversation because I'd like to hear what you think is real versus hype. Um, I think the audience needs to understand what should they truly be concerned about and what shouldn't they. Um, I mean, that is, you know, being able to trace back and have a, a, a truth mechanism uh, we can talk about what you know Elon's looking to build as well uh, on the truth side, but it's fascinating when the truth becomes blurry. Yeah, and you know, there's not always an objective truth because it depends upon your individual context, right? Yeah. And we didn't have the systems to be able to be comprehensive, authoritative, or up to date enough to do that until today. Yeah. So, we well, we can actually go to the uh, root source of the data and, and uh, see, is it valid? Uh, maybe it's a blockchain enabled validation mechanism. Um, you know, Maybe it's got that authority, that authentication. Maybe it's, uh, you, know, you mentioned Elon, community notes on Twitter that are AI enhanced, yeah. that can pull from various things you know, and show the provenance. So you've got provenance, again, you've got authority, you have comprehensiveness, you have up-to-dateness. The future of Wikipedia is not what Wikipedia looks like today. But yeah. that future becomes something that can be integrated into other things. So what you'll have is for any piece of information, you'll be able to say, this is the bias from which it was said. These are the compositional sources and more. So for example, there's a great app that I use called Perplexity AI. Okay. 
So when you go to GPT-4 or Bing, you write stuff, it doesn't give you all the sources. Perplexity actually brings in all the sources at a surface level, mm. but it references why it said certain things with GPT-4. That's just going to get more and more advanced, so you can dig into as much depth as you want and ask it to rephrase things as, what if that article there wasn't true that fed this? Or what about this perspective, if I want it to be a bit more libertarian? Do, do you that. think it's possible to actually get to a... Uh, fundamental truth in a lot of these areas? I think it depends on the area, right? Some areas there are fundamental truths. This happened or it didn't happen, even though you see deniers of various things, you know? Yeah. A lot of th stuff is probabilistic when you're thinking about the future, you know? But even something like climate, you see a lot of deniers of the real problem that we have, with it being very difficult to persuade them because it becomes part of their ideology almost. But with this technology, you can say, look, Literally, here is the comprehensiveness. So like Jeremy Howard and Trisha Greenlay did an analysis of well over 100 mask papers and did a meta-analysis on the effectiveness of that for COVID. Mm -hmm. And then that helped change the global discussion on masking because someone actually bothered to do a comprehensive analysis. What was the result? Well, the result was that masks work for <laughs> respiratory disease. There are so many people that just refuse to believe that masks have any value. Yeah. Uh, but let's not go down that road. Yeah. You know, one of the things yeah. I found interesting was the idea of a, uh, a GPT model being able to translate your points of view for someone else to make, to receive them better. Like if you're hardcore to the right and you want to convince someone about your issue, having, uh, having, chat gpt or uh one of stability's products generate a rewritten version of that language so the person can hear it better um i find that an interesting and powerful tool yeah i think this is the thing it's all about your individual context and what resonates with you because information exists within a context yeah so if it's going to change a state within you you need to understand your point of view so if we think of these as really talented youngsters these ais that go a bit funny what would you want? You would want someone to sit down and say, well, I'm listening to your point of view in your context and my point of view in my context, and let's find some common ground and then we can work from there. Mm -hmm. Much of politics isn't really about facts, it's about persuasion. Because facts, when you have diametrically a divergent context, are very difficult to do. So you said being able to rewrite something from one context to another is important, but then you have to understand the context. And that's what these models do really, really well. Yeah. We can take a piece and we can say rewrite it as a rap by Eminem or in the style of Ulysses by James Joyce. Yeah. And it will do that because it understands the essence of that. 